Pratima from Planet Physiology and welcome to the second part of Properties of Cardiac Muscle. In the previous part, we have studied morphological and electrical properties of cardiac muscle and in this session, we shall study mechanical and metabolic properties of cardiac muscle. Mechanical properties of cardiac muscle include contractility, all or none law, long refractory period, infatigability and incomplete tetanus. Most of these properties are similar to that of skeletal muscle properties. Since you have already studied skeletal muscle properties, we shall also discuss here what are the differences between the same property exhibited by skeletal muscle and that of cardiac muscle. If you have not watched my earlier video on properties of skeletal muscle, please do watch it for a clear and better understanding. The link for the same is provided in the description box below as well as in the card above. Before starting with the mechanical properties, please remember over here, mechanical events always follow the electrical events. That means, action potentials will occur first and then the mechanical events that is contraction and relaxation. Let us begin with the contractility. It is defined as ability of the tissue to respond to the adequate stimulus in the form of contraction. Normally, cardiac muscle respond to electrical stimulus from pacemaker, but it can also respond to mechanical or chemical stimuli. Due to its contractility, heart can pump blood in circulation which is essential for working of all the tissues. The force of contraction of the heart or the cardiac muscle is directly proportional to the initial length of the muscle fiber within physiological limits. This is known as Frank Starling's law and due to this cardiac output can be altered based on the end diastolic volume. I hope you remember end diastolic volume is the volume of blood in the ventricle at the end of ventricular diastole and this volume decides the length of cardiac muscle fiber and hence the stroke volume and the cardiac output. Next property of cardiac muscle is long refractory period. Refractory period is the time interval in which muscle fails to elicit the response to the second adequate stimulus. In case of cardiac muscle, it lasts for longer duration and hence called as long refractory period. You might get the question, why it lasts for longer time in cardiac muscle? Now, if you remember, refractory period is basically the property of action potential where the entire depolarization as well as repolarization is refractory. Cardiac muscles show plateau potential and hence the duration of action potential itself is long. As a result, refractory period also lasts for longer time. As indicated in the diagram, the blue area is absolute refractory period and the pink one is relative refractory period. The total duration of refractory period in case of cardiac muscle is about 250 milliseconds, whereas in case of skeletal muscle it is just about 50 milliseconds. The lower panel of the diagram shows mechanical events in the form of systole and diastole. It is clear from the diagram that almost entire systole and most of the diastole is refractory and hence heart always relaxes before initiation of new contraction. This makes sure maintenance of minimum essential cardiac output. Because of long refractory period, cardiac muscles cannot be tetanized and they do not fatigue. Long refractory property can be experimentally demonstrated in frog's heart by eliciting extrasystole and compensatory pause in beating heart or by applying two successive stimuli in case of quiescent heart. It also can be demonstrated by incomplete tetanus. The first graph indicates extrasystole and compensatory pause whereas the second graph is that of two successive stimuli. The next property we are going to study is tetanus. It is defined as sustained state of muscle contraction due to multiple successive stimuli. Cardiac muscles cannot be tetanized because of long refractory period where 
the entire systol and initial part of the dust will fall in refractory period hence in case of cardiac muscle it is known as incomplete tetanus this is essential to maintain blood supply to vital organs next is infatigability fatigue is defined as reduced or absence of response due to continuous stimulation as the part of diastole is refractory cardiac muscle always relaxes before the next contraction begins and therefore it cannot be fatigued this is also important for maintenance of blood supply to vital organs the last mechanical property of cardiac muscle fiber is all or none law it states that if the stimulus is threshold or supra threshold muscles will show maximum contraction whereas muscles will not contract at all if the stimulus is sub threshold in case of heart this law is obeyed by cardiac muscle as a whole that is atrial syncytium as well as ventricular syncytium will show this property of all or none law importance of this property is that the weak stimuli cannot elicit contraction of the muscle and thereby save the energy whereas for threshold as well as supra threshold stimulus the entire cardiac syncytium contracts together this is essential for effective pumping of the blood now coming to the metabolic properties cardiac muscles generate atp by oxidative phosphorylation process and to support this they have abundant blood supply which is about 80 ml per 100 g per minute cardiac muscles also contain numerous mitochondria to support oxidative phosphorylation process and their myoglobin content is also high which helps in oxygen availability all these features support their higher metabolic demands since cardiac muscles mainly work on aerobic metabolism main substrate utilized is fatty acids followed by glucose and then just 5% on ketone bodies and amino acids thus it doesn't much rely on glucose whose levels keep fluctuating under various circumstances also a greater number of atps are generated by utilizing fatty acids than that of glucose by oxidative phosphorylation which is essential for their continuous contraction so let us quickly summarize the properties of cardiac muscle cardiac muscle has property of contractility contraction lasts for longer duration when compared to skeletal muscle skeletal muscle show fast contraction so their twitch duration is lesser cardiac muscle show long refractory period whereas skeletal muscle show shorter refractory period this is because of the difference in the type of action potential because of long refractory period cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized or it cannot be fatigued but skeletal muscle can be tetanized as well as fatigued all or none law is demonstrated by cardiac muscle as a whole because of syncytium because of presence of gap junctions whereas in case of skeletal muscle all or none law is demonstrated by individual motor units so these were the properties of cardiac muscle and their comparison with skeletal muscles thank you if you enjoy my sessions press like button and share it with your friends if you haven't yet subscribed my channel subscribe it now and press the bell icon to get further notification thanks for watching see you in the next video